Welcome back to Comic Book News. I'm Dan Shaheen. You know, there was a time when uh, the notion of a superhero was uh, pretty much intrinsically tied up with the idea of a secret identity, right? So uh, the very first, our boy Superman, of course, mild-mannered reporter Clark Kent. Uh, so what happens when uh, the, the prototype superhero gives up his secret identity? Well, that's what happened today, and we're going to talk about it today on Comic Book News. Hey, welcome back to the Fortress of Solitude. Today, uh, yeah, Superman number 18, Brian Michael Bendis uh, has made his mark on Superman. He came in and changed a lot of things in Superman's world. Uh, started, moved around the Fortress of Solitude, destroyed Kandor, uh, retconned the destruction of Krypton, turned, uh, uh, took his Superman's young preteen son and ate, sent him into space and where they aged him up and now he's a he's a teenage man and he's running the legion of superheroes in the future so things are changing and ben has decided to try one more thing we're going to do the big reveal in this day and age why should superman have a secret identity this is a question they've been toying around with um you know in the wake of some of the recent crossover events this almost seemed inevitable uh although they've uh They've sort of like couched it in, in different reasoning in this book. Um, but wait, why are we talking about it when we've got a million dollar comics can? Oh yeah, Superman number 18. Brian Michael Bendis. Uh, it's got uh, Ivan Rice pencils and Joe Prado inks with Alex Sinclair colors. Man, it's a... Great team to work on Superman. Nothing uh, groundbreaking, just really, really solid superhero art and storytelling. You know, that's been one of the um, the great things, but also kind of one of the frustrating things about the Bendis run is he has had access to some of the top tier artists over at DC. And um, some people think maybe he hasn't utilized them to their fullest extent. Let's take a look at this book and see how he deals with his rather historic moment. Uh, in the character of Superman. So we begin um, in media res here, as usual with Bendis. We begin Superman landing at the what's described as uh, the world's biggest press conference that's been called by Perry White. Nobody knows what's about to happen. And he lands and he starts talking. Uh, this is Superman truth, right? Um, and of course, in Bendis style, we immediately cut away to a flashback to last week on Thanagar. The idea here is that they've created this new United Federation of Planets, supposedly now founded basically by Superman's son, uh, that, that's going to stretch all the way into the future to the uh, 31st century and the, the Legion of Superheroes, right? So um, Superman is the representative of Earth. I don't know who elected him that. I don't know how he gets to speak for the entire planet. Uh, without any kind of democratic say, but I guess that's just how it works. Um, and so anyway, Su Superman's been kicking around the idea of uh, revealing a secret identity. So he decides to talk it over with, you know, his good friend and superhero-ish colleague, Adam Strange. Okay, I I it's convenient that Adam Strange is here, he's a space superhero and he's out there, but this is a guy who does not have a secret identity, right? So his name is Adam Strange, that's his real name, it's not a superhero name. So his perspective on it is pretty much like, yeah, why do you have a secret identity? I don't really get it. Why don't you just tell everybody who you are? Who are you anyway? Are you Batman? They make a big joke about that. Anyway, uh, so they talk it over and, and Adam Strange is basically like, you know, why not? Why wouldn't you reveal it? I don't, I don't really see why you wouldn't. And Superman is like, you know, all, everything started, Jor-El had all these secrets. Superman's dad, Jor-El, had all these secrets about Krypton's past and the destruction and all this. But it all began with one secret. And that secret was like, don't tell anybody you're from Krypton. Uh, don't tell anybody the baby's from Krypton, right? So he's thinking he can maybe undo some of that. So he works up the nerve and Clark's in the office and he works up the nerve and he, you know, eavesdrops on Perry White's heart for a second for whatever reason. Uh, just to see how calm he is. And, and let me just point out that this points out just one of many like ethical violations that Superman commits like on a uh, issue by issue basis and how like 
him being a reporter and revealing that he ha- he is indeed Superman really calls into question some of his reporting and some of his methodology for gathering information. I'm just going to put that out there. Um, anyway, and here we get the reveal. Wordless. He comes in, he opens his shirt, and Perry gives him a hug. Uh, okay, that's one way to handle it. If you don't really want to write the scene, but you know, still show that it's emotional, I'll say okay. Next, we get, <clears throat> man, the reveal to Superman, or to Jimmy Olsen. This is Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen, man. These guys go back deep. Jimmy has been super involved with Superman from the get-go, and it's really important. And uh, so he does this reveal and he, where he says, Jimmy, come on, I want you to take a picture. And he puts this, the glasses on, and Jimmy's like, what? I just see Superman with glasses. What, what are you trying to say, Superman? I don't understand. He's like, I'm Clark, I'm Clark. Ha ha, big joke. Lois told me this morning. Ha ha. Hmm. Lois. Okay. Um, could have been a really interesting, fun moment and a conversation between them about what that means and the rich history between these characters. But now nah, we'll just um, have Superman talk to Lois and Lois go like, oh man, yeah, Jimmy, it was really emotional. It was really like a thing to behold. You should have been there when I revealed your secret identity again without telling you to somebody who you're really close to. I didn't like this part. Maybe this is going to be explored in the Lois Lane book or the Jimmy Olsen book, but neither of those are written by Bendis. So this feels a little bit like um, kind of a cheat out of that moment, but okay, what are you going to do? Oh, there, he's, I'm sorry, he's subverting our expectations, right? Okay. Um, so anyway, back to the press conference. And Superman basically, you know, is going to tell his story. And the world is watching, right? From, from Mira and underwater. I guess she's got cable or streaming, underwater streaming package. And... Uh, the Justice League are watching, and, and, and of course, you know, the gang at the uh, Daily Planet, and Batman and Robin is watching, and, uh, and, and who? The Titans are watching. So, like, why, did, why didn't why did Superman go to Batman? I mean, he went to Adam Strange and talked about it, but he didn't go to any of these other guys, including, like, Batman, to talk about maybe the implications of what revealing that means and how, like... Now, that's just another clue and another way somebody could backtrack and figure out who Batman is or other members of the Justice League somehow through connections. To... Not even discussed. And Batman is like, I guess, is he happy? It's hard to say. This You can't tell from this if he's happy or not, so I'm not going to make any judgments. Okay. Um, so anyway, Superman reveals it. He's like, I'm going to keep being Clark Kent. Uh, and we'll see how that works out, right? I'm going to keep being an invest. I love being a reporter. So now I'm a reporter who has x-ray vision and can hear uh, all over the city and can tell if you're lying and has access to alien technologies and is basically unstoppable. Uh, so I see a lot of ethical uh, quandaries as a reporter that might need to be explored. Is that where we want to go in the Superman comic? Maybe. I doubt we will. I think that stuff will kind of be glossed over. And, you know, to tell you the truth, I wouldn't even be that surprised if this got just sort of like forgotten about and somehow erased and retconned in the not very distant future. We'll see if it sticks. Anyway, cut to the Villains United boardroom, right, with Grodd and Brainiac and all the villains that have been working for Luther. Luther's been in this weirdo, crazy cape, mystical outfit, which suddenly morphs back into his, like, business suit Luther. And they're like, dude, Luther! How did you not see this coming? Next. Now what? Okay. So, how? you know, it kind of does raise a good question. How did Luthor not know this? How did no one know this? Oh, you know, as a matter of fact, I, I, I skipped over it, but there was a panel of, like, Leviathan reacting and seeing this news. And if you've been reading any of the Leviathan stuff, I mean, he has access to all of the information from all of the intelligence gathering agencies that specialized in superheroes in the DC universe. Are you telling me none of them knew that Superman was Clark Kent? Are you honestly, I mean, I can see where you could go, okay, if normal Joes don't know, people don't know, but are you telling me the government is not just pretty much 
honing in and needing to know who Superman is and understand that and figuring that out. Doesn't make sense. If they don't, it doesn't make much sense. Not to mention Lois Lane revealed to Sam Lane not long before the whole event, Leviathan non-event happened. And uh, so that info is out there. I, I just, it almost, to this, it almost made sense to me if Superman were saying, look, I, the info is out there now in Leviathan's hands and I don't want him to hold that over me. So I want to take that off the table by revealing. That actually would have made sense if that was even broached at all. It wasn't even discussed or mentioned. So I don't think that's necessarily what was thought about. Um, you know, I, I want to talk about for a second, uh, another Superman related topic too. while we're talking about Superman, um, there was this, uh, a tweet. Okay. Forbes put out a tweet and you may have seen this news story. Forbes says DC still doesn't DC film still doesn't know what to do with Superman. The studio reportedly is unsure how to make the character relevant to modern audiences to which Neil Gaiman responded came in and responded look you don't make it relevant you make it inspiring okay and 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 he kind of nails it there in the sense that that what's missed the mark on the last several superman movies is man they're like batman was this dark movie and with a gritty edge that's what people want out of superheroes so that's what we got to make superman into the answer is no obviously any comic book fan knows uh that it, the, there's a difference between Superman and Batman, and those should be highlighted in the stories and the approach to it, right? Superman is a positive story. Uh, uh, you know, similar stories of orphans, there is that connection like they did in the Superman-Batman movie, but it's the difference of how they were raised. One had his parents there to guide him, the other did not, and how those went in different paths, and one went towards the dark and the other towards the light, but they're both pursuing justice in their own way. Um, I'm going to totally tangent right now because, you know, let's see. If you're watching this, you're one of the hardcore people anyway. So, look, I read a book once called It's Superman uh, by Tom DeHaven. You may have seen this out there. And there's a couple of different covers for it that you might have seen. Um, and this took Superman literally back to its roots by setting it. At, it was a novel, no, not comics. It was set in the Great Depression like when Superman was released in the 30s. And it took it back to that root, those roots. And it was a more depowered Superman where like a bullet it wouldn't kill him, but it might hurt him. And, and, and it was a really drastically depowered. Um, and when he got his super suit by like working in a circus, strong man, like as a hobo running with the circus, really cool depression era story. I think... DC, I, I'm, I'm putting on my DC executive hat since nobody else seems to be able to figure out how to do Superman. Here's how you do it, guys. Free free movie pitch for you right now, okay? Um, so you take Superman and you set him in the, in the 1930s and uh, that's the beginning. And you let him be low-powered, but you let him... Ha Superman's like an immortal, right? So you have him live until current day, living through those different eras getting more and more powerful through those eras as he did in the eras of the comics, right? And so you get to where you can have a modern day, super crazy, ultimately powered Superman, but you can go back and tell simpler stories. You could do a Brainiac story in the 50s with a young Jimmy Olsen, and then you could age these characters up but keep Superman at a constant age. We know they've got the technology to do this. Uh, they could have su the, the early Golden Age Superman, if you will, inspiring the other superheroes that appear. And you see the Justice League through the 60s, 70s, 80s, etc. into present day. And wouldn't that be fun? I think it would. Hey, speaking of fun, you know, I have a ton of fun watching these videos. And I want to thank uh, every single one of you for watching this show uh, and especially for commenting, right? I love the comments and we have one of the best comment sections that I've ever seen uh, in a comic channel on YouTube because, well, it's respectful. I, I don't uh, really like disrespectful comments, so I kind of ixnay them when I see them down there. But I've seen maybe one or two in the entire time doing this channel. So thanks for commenting. If you haven't already, hit subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, uh, check us out for new videos. I'm gonna try and pump out as many as I can this week to make up for some lost time in previous weeks. 
Thank you for your patience. And most of all, you know what? Thanks for watching.